All right, this is the uh, boring bar uh, itself. Um, what I want to do is I'm gonna put a flat on there, then I'm gonna drill a hole, and then I'm just gonna file the whole uh, square. This is uh, just under three eighths of an inch uh, square. And I want to make it so that the top edge of this is on center line. Uh, so it's gonna be a little bit of an off, offset type of hole. Not much material there, but uh, it should be okay, I think. Cause it's gonna be a hole through it. And I'll, set it back, I'll set it back about a little more than a quarter of an inch probably from the end, the hole itself. spotting drill in here and I'm going to I've moved over half the um, distance from center uh, that the, the width of the tool so that the I'm gonna drill a U uh, size hole uh, and then it'll be just a little bit big and then I'll be able to file out the corners to uh, match the, the, the tool here so it should come really close to that center line we're just going to spot drill it here. We'll just work on filing that out. If you get it just right, sometimes you can just knock it right on through those holes, you know, those round holes. All right, the pouring bar is complete. Uh, we had a successful uh, live stream there, and that uh, th that's where I made this, uh, this part here. Uh, this is the most critical part. Uh, the, the hole size, the spacing has to be right on the money. A, uh, less than a thousandth of tolerance uh, is here for to match the holes here. And uh, it came out awesome just awesome so I'm going to, what I did uh, the only thing I've added here is I added set screws for this and a set screw on the end to lock the uh, boring bar in uh, I'm going to run over and insert the pins these are uh, just a, a light pretty light press fit this, this one actually slides in kind of but then stops so uh, I'm going to go over and tap these in with a hammer uh, against the anvil real quick and I'll be right back All right tapped in now uh, One comment was uh, possibly lock tidying these in I I'm not going to do that right now. That's why I put the set screws in And I'm just going to lock those down 
nice and snug. And they fit so good in here. And with those set screws, they're not going anywhere. They'll be good. Now you'll see here, this fits just, hopefully, as well as it did the other day. <laughs> it just fits just awesome. Just perfect in there. Couldn't ask for a better fit. And then, the, then the, that would be locked in here. Now the... Get to find the right. There we go. Uh, then the boring bar. Uh, I just finished this up. Uh, pretty simple. Uh, got a nice square hole in there. I put a set screw here and a set screw in the end to lock it in place. The tool. And then we have a set screw on the end here. That's going to work out just fantastic, I think. This way I can control the extension out and uh, to where I need to reach uh, on the on the mixer uh, shaft. So uh, that's the idea here. If I don't have to go, well, if I only have to go that far, I only have that much out <laughs> type of thing. Uh, but this way it also makes a little more versatile tool. So that will lock in there. And we'll just snug that. Oh, very, very solid. Now, what I'm using is, I'm going to use these. These are 3 8 insert tools. One's a left and one's a right. That's because I have shoulders to go up to uh, on both sides. The, ones, the one, uh, one end has a collar that we have to work around and I, need, I want a machine up to each side of it, so I need to have a left and a right type of tool. And that's why I'm going to use these. And they'll just slip in here. And we can lock it, lock it in nice and tight. And control that stick out. There we go. So this is an ex excellent little project. Uh, and I designed it so that this bar will clear the clear the head so you could do that. I didn't need a lot. Now you're going, well, why didn't I just use the holes in here? Because even using the outer hole here and putting a three-quarter bar in, I didn't have enough clearance fully extended, fully shifted out uh, to clear the uh, diameter and to, and to and to machine it actually I couldn't machine it with just a straight bar out of here because it, it wouldn't go out far enough to clear the uh, the, the uh, shaft so I needed to extend this out a little bit uh, a little bit I didn't need a lot but I went this far and so I could clear the clear the head here so now I have plenty of adjustment uh, to reach around the collar and the machine the, both of them All right, I have the plate up here uh, on the table. Uh, uh, one, two, three blocks under the corners and in place. And what I did is I have my indicator, my test indicator on here and on the high spot of this pin I made. I made this pin to screw into these holes up against, and it goes up against the shoulder. So it's the same each time. And uh, Moved it from end to, from here to there, back and forth a few times, and and lined it up with within one thousandth. I'm absolutely amazed, but I got it within one thousandth. I, I want every. I'm going to mill this edge is what I'm going to do. So I have a square edge, um, or reference edge. I don't know if I will actually make a square edge. I, I might, but I want at least one edge. So I have a reference, and 
Uh, then I'm going to drill my hole pattern. And I'm going to do a two, uh, two inch by two inch uh, hole pattern in the plate. And it, that's going to include those holes. So it, uh, I laid it out so I could actually, that would be within the, on the two inch hole pattern. Um, I'm going to drill a five eighth hole and then for about five eighths deep. And then I'm going to drill and tap the rest of the hole for a half inch 13. That way I could use uh, one of those uh, welding table clamps that just slip into the socket. A two inch pattern is seems to be pretty much the standard everybody uses and they use five eighths holes uh, mostly. Uh, so even though some use half inch holes, but I want to be able to bolt to it with a half inch 13 uh, because of the mill table clamps and all this stuff is half inch 13. So I could use all that stuff also on here. And I could use it on the mill table and still screw something in uh, if it was over the table and uh, clamp stuff down. So kind of a dual purpose here. I have a lot of holes to drill, um, but I've been wanting to do this for a long time, so I might as well do it now. Uh, anyway, so we're uh, clamped in place. I'm going to mill that edge here first, but I wanted that edge to be in line with that first row of holes. I have a one inch uh, solid carbide three flute uh, end mill in here. Probably the wrong end mill to use for this, but it's the only one I really have. And we're going to use that. Uh, and it's a Niagara one. And uh, thanks uh, to Dennis Nolan, I have it. Well, let's see how it goes. You know, this is just a, it looks to be flame cut. Uh, well, it might not have been flame cut even. It might have been plasma cut, but it's, it's similar. It's basically the same. We're going to take off just the minimum. It's, I just want to get it cleaned up. It's not a bad edge. It's, and I, I, I don't think it's, it's out. I think about thirty or forty thousand on one end there. So, we'll see how it goes. I'm just gonna go slow here and find the high spot. Well, the high spot's this end, so that's kind of a good thing. Uh, and I'm just gonna start whittling it down. Uh, the tip plate's 28 inches long. The exact stroke of my table's 28 but not from the center here. I could have swung this and maybe have got a little more, but I'm gonna do most of it and then I'll, I'll, I'll shift it and, and clean up the rest. All right, now that we're all lined up there, we have about two and three quarter inches to mill off of this end, uh, so it's all the same. And then I'm probably going to turn. Then I'm going to turn it, and I'm going to mill this end off also. So I have two. I decided to make it square, so I have two square edges. And this edge is, of course, now is lined up with this line of holes, so we can uh, we can line it real well, and uh, we'll have two two nice edges at least. I'm going to use the paper method there to uh, find the edge there. Paper is about three thousandths, and uh, we'll come up here and mill it. We'll set this the DRO at zero there. I'm going to mill it, and then we'll just check it and, and see how much we have to go in to make it perfectly smooth.
I just checked the calibration on this, so it's right on the money. We'll see what this does, measures here. Just a touch over about one and a half now. Yep, one and a half. call it there that's I, that even feels perfect we'll see how good my fingers are sure it feels good half a thousand Yep, so we're about a half a thousandth uh, high. So we'll, we'll be okay with that. <laughs> I did the old double indicator. This, uh, this is a half, half thousandth one. This is a tenth one. And in three inches, uh, two tenths. Uh, so we're good. We're square enough. Uh, I've initially set it up with my nice big uh, more and right that a viewer sent me. Now we're ready to mill that back edge. All right, this back edge is done. And as you can see, man, that came out really nice. Take off, the, I'll deburr that edge a little bit and we're gonna set up to start drilling holes. Less than a half a thousandths over 26 inches. Sweet deal. And we're centered up on the, on this hole. This is gonna be the reference hole. So we're centered up real nice. Now I'm gonna measure these just so I have an exact uh, measurement. In case something gets uh, out of whack, you never know, you know? There we go. And I'll correct my drawing now.
All right, now I need to move my quill, my ram, over. Now I have no scales on my ram or anything, but I'm using this hole as my reference hole. So I screwed my pin in. Now this is this pin is right on the money at one inch. So uh, that's, that's really nice. <laughs> and I'm using my fireball tool setup blocks for three and a half inches here. I'm gonna set this against here. Then I'm going to use my edge finder and touch off of this edge. That will be the center of the next row. And I'll re-zero my DRO. And I, I can go off of that. I'm also going to put a one inch block over here so I can parallel it up to this edge here. Like that. And then I know I'm square here and I'll touch off of that. Alright, I moved the head out about six inches. Uh, so what I did is I cranked my table up. Almost all the way forward, uh, all the way forward, and then I backed it off of 50 thousandths. Then I brought my ram out to about split the difference on the edge finder. That gives me a little adjustment room. Now we'll find it. Now we'll do an edge find on it. I think another one of these magnetic blocks. I can just clip it on there. Take this setup there, there, and I'm good to go. Right there. We'll y zero that. It'll bring it out a hundred thousand. Zero it again. Now the center line is right on the edge here, set up for our next hole, our next row, and we have room to move the table over a couple a couple holes were a couple rows were. So we'll have one row, two row, probably three rows uh, in this position, and then we'll move the ram again and do the same process. I'm using my uh, tangent engineering uh, large quill wheel, and, and for drilling all these holes. Uh, this is uh, a big advantage. Uh, normally I have a 8 inch one I use a lot, but for these whole, all the drilling and everything, having this big hand wheel uh, is a really, really helpful. Especially uh, drilling a 5 8 hole here. It makes it like butter. This, this is uh, fantastic, and uh, i got to thank Tangent Engineering for sending me one. And, and, uh, but uh, on, on this project, this is really, really helping out with all these holes I have to drill. Well, I think that's complete. Uh, maybe at a later date I'll do the other two edges. The other two edges aren't, weren't as good as these two I did in the machine. Uh, there's going to be a little, quite a bit more metal that needs to come off. Uh, so I did not do these other two. But uh, maybe at a later date. Uh, anyway, I mean this came out fantastic. A lot of holes to drill. Uh, you know, I had four processes per hole. Uh, with spot drill, uh, drill for the tap hole, count the counter bore, and then tap it. So uh, that was a lot of processes to do. It took me several days here to do this. You may, this is really going to be primarily a designated, it's really a welding table. Uh, that's the primary use of it. Uh, it's just uh, I I wanted it to be able to be used here on the mill. That's one reason why I did the tapping, but but then again, those tap tools will come out handy too for bolting things down. Uh, I don't have to, um, 
you know, put a nut on the back side or anything like that. So uh, this is this is going to work out just great. So I picked up a couple of clamps uh, for use on here with 5/8 stud on and. They go, they go in just super nice, just super nice. Uh, I might have to sand these top edge here a little bit, but uh, other than that, they just go. They're, the holes are kind of dirty and gummy right now from anchor lube, but this is just, these are perfect. A couple of those clamps in there, and then uh, a couple of these type of clamps also. Yeah, and they'll just they just go right in there also. So that's that's a pretty good. I, I, this will be a, a big help in the welding and, and fabrication type of work. I got to pull this off of here, clean it up a little bit, and probably deburr the backside holes. And we'll uh, get a set up for the cement mixer and the yoke. That's the that's the next the next thing on the list. So, uh, thanks you guys for watching. Please subscribe. Buy a t-shirt, buy a coffee cup right underneath the video. And, uh, you know, check out the Amazon links when I put them in. I put them in just most, uh, anytime I'll put Amazon links. I bought these on Amazon. And uh, I'll put links to that stuff. If you check it out, I, I do uh, get a little bit of a stipend uh, if you click on it. So, which is always kind of nice. Help support the channel. Click on those links. So thank you guys and thanks for watching.